I don't know. Okay. I think that fixed it. Take three. Yes. Okay. We're back on the air. I'm going to give it a second. Hopefully we can all find uh, the right video and we will never use Google Plus ever again. Thank you, honey, for being the best wife ever. All right, we'll give it a couple seconds for everybody else to find where we are. We found it? Somebody goes, huzzah. Huzzah. All right, two viewers. Okay, I think we're finally finding it here. Sorry again about that. Three viewers. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Google Plus, for everything that you do and all the new ways you find to disappoint us. All right, okay, so we're back. We're back. 11 viewers. Okay, good. I have some, uh, some videos to delete later. All right, this never happened. Okay, so um, we're back, and it's a new year, and uh, hopefully we're all settled into the new year, back at work, having fun. I know my wife and I go back to work tomorrow, and we are not looking forward to it at all. Um, but that's okay. Um, anyway, so on that uh, that note, it's a new year, and I see a lot of threads on the forums around uh, about painting goals for the new year. And people will say, you know, things like, uh, you know, I want to have a fully painted army, or, um, you know, I want to enter this contest or whatever. Uh, so if you guys would, my wife is here uh, fielding the questions. If you guys, <laughs> if you guys uh, have any painting goals you want to share with each other, <laughs> you are more than uh, encouraged to, uh, to share them with us as well. Um, one thing I keep seeing over and over is people say, I'm not going to buy any new models until I paint everything I've got. And that's one that I will not even pretend uh, to... Uh, to try to stick to that. There's no way I cannot do that. I'm constantly buying new things and I have a stack and stacks of unpainted stuff. So you won't see me making that promise. One thing though that I do want to do in the new year, uh, both just on my own and for the Schnauzer Face channel, is I want to start branching out more from Privateer Press and Games Workshop. I think I'm limiting myself way too much last year. I think I only did models from War Machine and Games Workshop. Um, I didn't even branch out into Warhammer Fantasy, I don't think. Uh, so this year, what I want to do every month of the year, I want to paint a model from a totally new line. So there'll always be, I want to do two videos a month. One, either War Machine or Hordes or Warhammer. Uh, and then the other one, each month, try out a new line or a new game system um, so that at the end of the year, I have 12 new lines that I have, uh, I'm trying out. So um, I'm not real, real familiar with a whole lot of different you know, game systems and models and that kind of stuff. So if you guys have anything that you think is really cool that you think i got to take a look at, please let my lovely wife know. Um, but I am going to show you... Uh, my wife is really into the makeup videos, and they all whenever they buy makeup and stuff, they all have to show it on their camera. So this is my haul video. Um, I'm going to do my own haul video today where I show all the cool toys that I got uh, from various models, so, or model miniature lines. So one second while I grab that box. <laughs> Any comments? Oh, good. Rivet, Rivet Wars, Rivet, Rivet Wars Kickstarter. I have not heard of that one. No, there's like a million Kickstarters and Indiegogo's going on right now. Um, so I'm gonna have to take a look at all of those. So um, I'm gonna, definitely gonna go through these this list this list tomorrow, uh, and I'm gonna write down everything you guys say. So I will be um, checking out the Rivet Wars. Kickstarter for sure. Um, so if there's anything else uh, that's not, you know, War Machine or Warhammer, let me know. Uh, first thing, I was very excited, and I, and I got all this stuff. I have to say, I have to plug this website, frpgames.com. You guys are familiar with them. I had never heard of them until somebody at my game store said that they're doing their crazy year end closeout sale, and it was totally crazy. They have a really nice close or a um, clearance section with overstocked items. And they have pretty pretty good discounts to those as it is. And then the last week of the year, they offer 50% additional discount on those. And um, I got some crazy, crazy good deals. So And uh, shipping was really good, and they're a good company to do. So frpgames.com um, for some of these things. I support your local store where you can. 
uh, but some of these things you're not going to be able to find at your local store. So first thing from Sphere Wars, Sphere Wars, I don't remember what company makes this. I don't know. Uh, but this thing looked really cool. It's got you know some tentacles and looks like a squid or something. So uh, he's also enormous. He's a huge model. So I'm very excited to do that one for sure. Um, also, one of the obvious ones outside of War Machine and Hordes from uh, Weird Miniatures. This is from um, Malifaux. Let me see if I can do this. There we go. No? There we go. Uh, Malifaux. It's a desol desolation engine or decimation engine or something like that. Another very cool one. Looking forward to painting. Um, Avatars of War. Avatar. Somebody said Avatars of War. Well, guess what? I, I just checked out Avatars of War. Um, this is the uh, Minotaur Lord with two weapons. And uh, very cool. He's a, he's a big model. I um, guess they didn't have a, anybody do the box art, so it's still the, in the green stage in the back. But it is a pretty cool model. Looking forward to doing that one as well. Um, and then this is awesome from Night Models. Um, the Star Wars models. This is the Gamorrean Guard. Um, not the the one I would have chosen from the whole Star Wars line if I could have, but um, everything was sold out. They have an awesome Yoda and a Jabba that, oh my god, if my wife ever found out that I bought that Yoda, or that Jabba, she'd be mad at me because it's really expensive, um, but it would be worth it, right? She said, yeah. Uh, so this is the size of the Gamorrean Guard. Uh, he's, I think, 54 millimeter scale or something. He's a big guy. Um, that's going to be a fun one to paint for sure. I'm a big Star Wars fan, obviously. I'm sure we all are. So that's going to be a fun one to paint. Um, this is from like this is like the only model in the whole Enigma line I'm not a huge fan of. The uh, Null. Um, you guys may be able to see if there's a little glare. Uh, it's an okay model. Um, I may end up picking up something else from Enigma at some point, but this was on sale. I got for like $6. <laughs> I was like, can't let an Enigma model go for $6 and not pick it up. And then this one, this is the most exciting one I found. And this was just kind of an afterthought. I saw it on the, the sale. And it's from, I believe this is pronounced Skybor. It seems like it should be Cybor. But everybody on the internet calls it Skybor. Well, somebody uh, else just, Skybor Miniatures makes some awesome stuff. I have a couple to paint. Sky, we have another Skybor. I think it, uh, they may or may not be their own game system. I know a lot of people use them as proxies for um, Warhammer stuff. And uh, this one, I did not expect it to be this size. It is the hugest thing is like, it's bigger than my hand. It's a snail, a mutant snail. And um, that is awesome. I pulled it out of this box. I thought it was going to be a standard this big, and I thought, no, you can you can kill a man with this. It's a giant block of resin. It's awesome and enormous. Um, and he comes with some sort of, uh, some sort of rider. Um, I believe the title for this one is uh, Rotten Lord on Mutant Snail. And I like all those words. So I was really excited to get that one. And I think that's all I've got. Um, I think what I just picked. Confrontation. Confrontation is that the the cool men you're not version of Rackham's models. This person is actually those those are those are pretty cool too. Um, the old Rackham models that were all out of print, really expensive. But I think the the confrontation or the cool men you're not picked up the rights to the models, or I'm not exactly how that works, but. Um, that's definitely one that I'd like to look at as well. And uh, Hugo, who does Ichiban painting, he set up his own um, model line, and he's got a giant, like enormous model, it's like a foot tall, uh, that he's going to send on over to me to paint as well. It was very nice of him. So if you guys haven't checked out Ichiban painting, he's very cool. Always wears a hat. So, very exciting. Very exciting. And also, I have to say this, I'm so excited about this. Can't have a bad day when you look at this. I got <laughs> my wife. I can't like came running out of my room and told my wife, I "Like I just got a Mountain King," and I already painted this on a previous tutorial uh, for a friend. I didn't actually have the model, but uh, I picked up it was on their Overstock. I got it for like forty three dollars. It was the it was an insane deal. I just had to get it. So um, really excited. Probably won't be doing a second Mountain King tutorial, but I can paint one without uh, you know having to deal with the camera, and I can do a, a little bit better job and put it in my army. So I'm very excited to do that again. So, any other questions or comments from the crowd? Ogres, ogres from the original Rackham, you can get on eBay. Excellent, I'll have to check out. I have been on eBay a lot recently, and um, my wife also got me some awesome gift cards for Christmas, the best wife ever, and I have been uh, eyeing like a million different things, um, you know, 
you're marking that money for like 400 different models. Um, but I'm kind of settled on either the Judicator um, Colossal from Meneth or Waiting on the Galleon, which comes at the end of this month. Also a Colossal from War Machine. And I'm looking at some uh, some uh, Forge World Tau models. Um, the Kroot Narlock Rider. Uh, very cool stuff. I'm not a big fan of anything from Tau. I don't even know why I clicked on the link over there at Forge World, but I saw that thing. It's like a some sort of dinosaur or something. It's really cool. So I may, may pick up that as well. We'll see. This question says, Madness $43. Madness 40 yes. It was mad. I saw that. I think there was one of those, like, those lightning deals. They put three of them on there. And, um, like, by the time... I, I, I went and checked out right immediately, and then by the time I posted on my local gaming um, forum, the North Texas War Machine forum, it's like, they're, they're selling Mountain Kings for $43, and they, by that time, they were gone. So I think that those were those were gone quickly. And I am very excited to be one of the ones who was able to get that. I was also thinking, if you guys, I mean, you guys are War Machine guys, um, when the, uh, the new private, or the um, Legion of Everblight Gargantuan comes out, I would like to do a mod where I put the uh, the dragon on top of a dead Mountain King instead of on the mountain he comes with, which would make the model about three feet tall total. Um, so that would be a ridiculous um, project, but it would be really cool. And the only thing that was keeping me away from before is that I'd have to buy a, a crazy expensive model to cut up as a base, but now that I got it pretty reasonably, I may, I may try it. I may try it out. We'll see. Anyway, do we have any other questions from the crowd? Yes, I've heard of the the guys at my game store are talking about Drop Zone Commander, and um, I don't even know if I've looked into it or not, but I do I do recognize the name. And so bummer, everybody's into the X Wing game now, but the X Wing models come pre painted. Otherwise, I would definitely be into that, but I'm not not really interested in a, a game where you just take them out of the blister and they're ready. So I'd rather do my own painting. You probably can can paint over them, but it wouldn't be the same. Wouldn't be the same. Uh, am I going to paint the gargantuan a different color than my privateer press or than the privateer press um, studio scheme? I don't. I I might. Um, I have painted a couple of um, the dire trolls in black and white as if they were from a black and white science fiction movie, and it would actually be kind of cool to paint something that big in black and white if I were to use him on his own. But if he were to be a base for like a dead, if he's a dead mountain king for an, uh, an archangel, he'd probably just be normal colors. But that would be interesting to do a whole. Model that large in black and white. That's a stock up in black and white paint, though. Says, Dead, troll, I love it. Dead troll, I love it. That's not fair. I'm a big troll player, but uh, <laughs> I, uh, I'm picking up a new faction this year for. Uh, well, my plan was originally to go to lock and load with in uh, in June, and uh, that's like Privateer Press's version of Games Day, and uh, into the painting contest there, and then it looked like we were going to move right at the same weekend that uh, that. Lock and load is, but now it looks like we're probably not going to move. My wife says maybe not, so we may end up going there. So I'm going to try to paint a uh, 50 point uh, Legion of Everblight faction in time, just in case, just in case we can go. And this person says Dark Sword miniatures have great names. I can't find them yet. Dark Sword minis. I'm going to have to write that one down. I did get an email from a guy yesterday um, who I think is somehow connected with Dark Age games. I'm not sure if he works for them or not, but he was offering to send me something from them. Um, and I, 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 I'm going to take him up on that because it was a very nice offer. Um, I think the Dark Age games also might be produced by Cool Mini or not. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, well. Well, while the comments are coming, I did have a question. One question I saw in the last, one of the last broadcasts before uh, it crashed, thanks to Google. Somebody asked, what air compressor do I use for my airbrush. And I used a TC20T, which I got from TCP Global, and it was about $100, $110, something like that, and uh, I think it might have even been free shipping, I don't know. And uh, I like it a lot. It comes with the three things that you want out of an air compressor, which are, it has a tank, so it can store air, so it's not continuously cycling. So it will store up a tank, it's a small tank, um, but it'll store up enough that it does. It can shut off for about 15 minutes at a time. Uh, it's also got a moisture trap so that no condensation or water gets into the line and then into your paint. And it's also got a regulator so you can adjust the pressure. <laughs> that was a dog over there. <laughs> You'll probably see her if I do this, actually. There you go. There you go. No, no wife in the picture. There's a dog, though. Um, 
Uh, so the pres re pressure regulator, you can regulate the pressure, obviously. You can set it higher or lower. So those are the three things you want in an in air compressor. The thing that I really wanted in an air compressor was something that's quiet. Um, you'll never see, probably in one of these videos, where we have a cat, but she's really scared of loud noises. So I had to make sure I got something that wasn't going to rattle the walls and freak out the cat. And this thing is so quiet that sometimes she even stays in the room with me while I paint. And that's a big uh, saying a lot. So it's quiet, it's cheap, and it comes with the stuff that you want. Um, also, I, this is you know saying both ways, but uh, I got one, and about two or three weeks after I started using it, it died on me. So that's you know, that's a negative. But I, I got in touch with TCP Global. I said this thing died. They said no problem. Don't even worry about sending it back. We'll send you a new one. Um, and I think they have a, a one or two year guarantee on their their compressors. So uh, you know, it, if it if you get one that you know that craps out on you, they uh, they do stand behind it. So that's a big big plus as well. So and sometimes I see compressors going for like three times that. And I know sometimes people say that the compressor is more important than the airbrush, but I think that you know this thing as long as it pumps out steady air with no water in it, I think it's fine. So I would not go with canned air though. Canned air is a huge waste of time and money. Is dark age different from dark sword? Oh, is dark age different from dark sword? I don't know. Cool. I, I don't know. Dark Age versus Dark Sword. I'm going to have to check that out tomorrow. See the cute dog in the back. Says, what a cute thing. She is so cute. I would. I can't show you, but my 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 dachshund's next to her. But my wife says she's not allowed to. My wife is not allowed to be on the video tonight. So maybe next week you can see the the dachshund. The pug had to go to his house because he was being a little rambunctious. But we miss him, and he's here in spirit. <laughs> I I I might have to check out that tutorial, the Pug Butt Miniatures tutorial. Might have to give it a give it a view. It sounds like it's you know you can learn a lot of good stuff over there. But uh, I think that they're onto that guy. I think that Coolman, no, uh, Daka Daka is gonna hunt him down, and he you know, he better he better run. Someone clarified, Dark Sword is not the same as Age. Dark Sword, Dark Age, two different things. I'll have to check them, check them both out. Twice as many things to look at. And then earlier someone said, I don't know how to pronounce it, P-A-I-Z-O. I don't know how to pronounce it. Has started releasing a lot of pre-painted minis, fantasy minis, and they have some larger and very large minis in their line. It would be easy to refine them and paint them up. Okay, P-A-I-Z-O, right? P-A-I-Z-O. Pai. 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 It looks Italian, and I did take. I think I actually took two years of Italian in college. Can't I can't even order a macaroni grill. So, sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. I'll have to take take a look at those. There's a lot of cool cool minis out there. Lots of different lines, and I felt like I was limiting myself by just looking at. Games Workshop and Privateer Press so much, so very excited this year to look at some other stuff. And uh, I got one a, a troll for my I'm not sure if it's Zenit Zenit I don't know. Uh, one of those things I got on FRP Games for like three dollars, and I got it in the, in the mail like this. It kind of sucks, um, but I'm still gonna paint it. So there's some of these models I'm not gonna be a big fan of them, but uh, I still want to try them out. You know, I still gotta expose myself to different things and try out new things. Right? Oh, okay. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put you guys on hold for one second while I uh, transfer the camera over to my painting area so I can do some painting tutorials. I've had a couple of questions about how to do a couple things, so I'm going to uh, be right back in one second. Unless Google breaks. All right, I am back, and I've got uh, new questions. 
and a new setup here. Here's a, in case you're curious, this is a Dire Troll Mauler from Privateer Press. One of my favorite figures in that game, if not my favorite. Take four? Okay. <laughs> it didn't break this time, thankfully. Or did it? Are you guys still out there? 24 viewers. Looks like you're still there. All right, one of the questions was, what kind of lighting setup do I use for painting? Um, I suppose that's two different questions. What do I use for painting on my own, and what do I use for uh, making videos? For painting, I just have a small desk lamp that I got at, I believe, Bed Bath & Beyond. Um, it's a one of those daylight balance lamps, so it's much bluer than uh, than your traditional incandescent lights that are a little bit yellower. Uh, and that's more than enough. This is all I would use if I was painting by myself um, without a camera. When I am painting with the camera, I have these enormous bulbs. There are two 300 watt fluorescent bulbs that I have right next to myself when I'm painting. And um, that's to, uh, if you're a photography guy, um, I like to have a, a, a very deep focus um, and I need a lot of light to be able to do that. So uh, I'm usually, I guess total in the room, there's probably about seven or 800 watts of light when I'm painting on camera. But when I'm just painting uh, just for fun, it's just, I don't even know what this thing is. It's like 13 watts or something like that. Um, Vallejo primer on metal figures. I'm assuming that's the Vallejo polyurethane primer um, through the airbrush. Is that, I assume that's what that is. On metal figures, we're having some chipping. Um, this one is primed. Hey, look at that. You can actually see there's some chipping there too. This one was primed. Where am I? There we go. Uh, with Vallejo polyurethane primer. Um, for the most part, I, I don't find too many instances of chipping, though of course I'm holding one in my hand that's been chipped. Um, but the best thing I find is to, uh, I mean, the, the usual stuff like cl thoroughly clean your minis before you start painting them. Um, don't use acetone like Pug Butt Miniature said. <laughs> um, and uh, just try your best to avoid handling the model at all. Um, for the bigger ones like this, you kind of got to hold it by the base, but if you're able to uh, if you're painting a smaller, you know, model like this one, um, this is the this is a fancy Space Marine. I was testing out my new metallics, and uh, he's got some pink metallic on him. Um, if you're if you're doing a smaller one, um, you can take like an empty bottle of paint and and blue tack it here, so you don't have to touch the base at all or the mini. The more you touch it, the more likely you are to chip it. Um, other than that, I would just say maybe shake the pot the the bottle really really well and maybe end up giving it two coats if you need to. I mean, the, the on metal minis, it's always around like sharp edges. You're going to get some chipping if you're not careful. Um, so you might want to also varnish over it as often as, as you think is necessary. Am I watching what? Oh. oh. And the only other thing I see is Paizo has teamed up with WizKids to produce the pre-painted miniatures. Reaper is still making metal minis for them. Ah, oh, Reaper's still making metal minis. Okay, I like you know Reaper's based out here, not too far from where where we live, and they have the Reaper convention every year. I may be able to go to that one. Uh, don't even have to be traveling, so I may go to that this year, the Reaper convention. So anyway, um, if you guys have any other questions, get them in. I've got something else I was going to show you guys real quick, quickly. Um, this is from, and I gave a quick review of the Minotaur paints in my um, Crix, <laughs> wow, uh, Crix Bloat Thrall video. Uh, but I thought I'd go over a couple more things um, so I can clarify the things. You know, I, I was, I, I, I guess I would say I was kind of a mixed review, and um, I, I hope that I can, you know, give some more explanation as to why. Uh, I, I said some things I wasn't, wasn't a big fan of and how I could actually show them out in front of you. Um, what I'm not a big fan of. So you may be looking at this and, and just saying, well, why does this guy have six bottles of identical paint? Um, it's actually not all the same paint, though it looks the same. Um, it's all six different shades. And this is one of my biggest you know, beefs with this line, is that the bottles are frosted in some way. That um, this looks like a dark blue. It's actually kind of a like a teal green color. There you go, if you can see that. And all the bottles are kind of going to give you this same color, and it's going to be difficult to look at them on the shelves and figure out what's what, even though all these colors are really different. Um, so that's one thing I'm not a big fan of. Hey, I got some turquoise on me. Uh, another thing I mentioned that the separation is bad. You can see, especially in the metallics, the separation is really bad. This is all the metallic pigment down here, and then all of the everything else. Um, here we go. So you can see it. 
you know, some horrible separation there. Not a huge problem. I mean, like, in that Seinfeld episode when Jerry mocked Elaine because all she had to do was shake her snapple. You know, all you have to do is shake your, your paint and then you're, you're good to go. So it's not a huge problem, um, but if you're going to paint with them on a palette, it is going to be a problem. Um, one thing I like is that this is a copper. Um, much better than... And here's another thing. All of their paints, I guess, for whatever reason, I don't know why, they put these lids on them and uh, so you have to go through every paint. And I know that's a, like a ridiculous thing to complain about, but then I end up getting paint all over my nails and stuff. Um, anyway, so this copper actually looks like copper, which is really, really nice because the um, you know, Vallejo Model Air Metallics, aside from the silvers, are really crummy. Um, the Mattel, Vallejo Model Air Gold, Brass, and... Um, I don't even know what else they have. Gold breast. They might have a copper. Um, they're all, they don't look like any of those things at all, but these do. Um, so these are, that's you know a big plus for them. Um, the silvers, I'm not a huge fan of. Again, these silvers, really you have to shake them all up a lot, I guess, because there's still a lot of metallic pigment on the bottom. Yeah, I'm not going to use these metallic silvers like hardly at all. They're not as good as the Vallejos. Um, one thing I'm not a big fan of with the Minotaur thing right now is that as far as I can tell, you got to either buy the whole set um, or nothing. I don't see anywhere on the internet where you could buy one bottle at a time. And I'm not going to, you know, I'm not a huge fan of like saying go out and buy the entire line of paint um, until you've tested them out. Um, but I mean, if you're in the in the model in the market for some um, for some airbrush ready paints. These are pretty good. They're not, I mean, they're not going to revolutionize, you know, the entire world, but they're pretty good. And one huge bonus they have is that, you know, Vallejo Model Air uh, paints are, are thin and they're ready for the airbrush, but most of them are muted military and earth tones. And uh, you don't have any pinks or turquoises or purples or that kind of thing in Vallejo Model Air. And this is geared toward war gamers. So you have a lot of those bright colors. So that's a huge bonus to me. So um, I'm definitely going to use these a lot. These aren't going to you know, be the only paint I ever use. Um, but uh, they're good paints. They're good paints. Who want, they're for my sake. Oh, that's true. So if, if you were to drink this, uh, now you know nobody uh, added anything into here that I don't want to drink. So this is, this is safe. Oh, okay. I have not had that issue with the... I have actually don't use the Vallejo varnish. I use the Liquitex varnish. Um, I have had some issues in the past with um, one of the P3 paints I got that was so thick it was like it was like um, PVA glue or even thicker than that. Um, and I, I thought that was just how the paint was, but it turns out that was just a bad pot. So it's possible that you just got a, a bad bottle of that varnish. I've never heard of it being that thick. I know a lot of... Or actually, everybody I know who uses it uses it through the airbrush. So it, And without any thinning, I think. So um, if it's really, really thick, you may want to contact wherever you got it from and say this, this is no good and uh, see if you can swap it out for a different one because it shouldn't be that thick that you can't spray it through the airbrush. And this person says, uh, webairbrushes.com, you can buy one at a time. But I can't find color swatches anywhere, so it's hard to tell what they are. Oh, that's another, okay, so webairbrushes.com. And I've heard some really, <laughs> I'll, I'll be nice to say mixed things about their website. Um, it's really confusing, and it looks it's a little dated, and I've heard a lot of trouble with PayPal going through and that kind of thing, that you actually have to end up calling them on the phone to make the orders. But apparently you can buy one paint at a time now, which is awesome, uh, as opposed to the whole line. Um, the, the lack of color swatches. Um, I know Chung from WG Consortium just posted one of their color swatches on his blog, which you might be able to get, maybe at wgconsortium.com, or you just go to his YouTube channel, and his blog is listed on the right side. And he just posted the color swatch thing uh, a few days ago. Uh, on that same note, I got really excited because I looked at it, I saw, saw some tones, and I was like, those are some really cool colors. Went over to my shelf and shook the pot as much as I could and poured it on the palette. It looked nothing like the, the colors on the color swatch. So um, it may be that the colors are not labeled correctly or not uh, accurately represented. So it still might be a, a little time before you... That that's worked out. There was a really cool. It's called Dusty Concrete. I think it's the one that I was really excited about. Like um, a grayish, pale, pale green. Um, looked like a really cool color uh, that I haven't seen in any other lines except maybe the VMA Duck Egg Green. And uh, I was disappointed to find out it was just regular gray, like just black and white mixed together. This person just had 
documentaries which is that I ordered the full set, haven't received them yet, I'm not a fan of the website, have PayPal trouble, and no real customer support yet, I hope that turns around. Yeah, I'm, I don't know what affiliation Web Airbrushes has with Badger, um, so I, I've heard some, you know, a shaking dog. Uh, I've heard both ways uh, on that website, um, but I will say this about Badger. I, I hope I'm not coming off overly negative on Badger because they do make good products. I do like their their you know their airbrushes and their paints are pretty good with too. Um, but one thing about Badger I really really like is their customer service is awesome over there. Um, I think I've mentioned before in my videos that I have a nickel allergy, so I have to use. Um, like for example, I can't use the regular Infinity. I have to use the chrome plated Infinity because um, if I touch anything that's made of nickel for too long, I start like breaking out in rashes and it's horrible. Um, so I emailed Badger um, and I said, "Do you have anything that has no nickel in it? Anything that's just like totally chrome or anything that's not nickel?" And I got an email back almost immediately. It said, "The best bet is to go with the Badger Chrome, which is here." Um, and the guy told me, "You know, it's it's like 95% um, plated in chrome, except there's a couple of bits in here." that I have a nickel plating and he offered to make me a custom like made one we said well this <laughs> there's the dog drinking water uh, he said you know we'll be happy to make one custom for you that is not plated in nickel in those places and I thought that was really really cool to get an email like that um, and then a couple days later I received an email from Ken who's the president of Badger um, just to follow up with me I said like did, did they take care of you did you get everything you needed and I was like that is awesome that you know the president of this company is just emailing me to make sure everything's good so um, that's one thing to say for sure. Badger has awesome customer support, so I imagine Web Airbrushes is not owned by Badger because that doesn't sound like them at all. This person asks, um, can you still use the Vallejo alcohol metallic? Use the Vallejo alcohol metallic if you don't have an airbrush to seal it with a varnish coat. Um, can you still use a Vallejo model uh, or Vallejo liquid metals, right? Alcohol yes, the Vallejo alcohol metallic to the liquid metals. Um, if you don't have an airbrush to seal it with a varnish. Um, absolutely. In fact, those I do my best to arrange my workflow so that I don't have to varnish over them because the whole benefit of the Vallejo liquid metals is that they're so reflective and so shiny that um, I don't want to have to put a dull coat or even a gloss coat over them to shift them at all. Um, if you don't have a, a, an airbrush, you can still, on a side note, you can still always apply varnishes just through an aerosol can. Like you can go to um, really any hobby shop and get a tester's dull coat or anybody who makes some sort of matte coat or a gloss coat. Wow, my dog is so thirsty. <laughs> um, and, uh, and and you can use that. I mean, you may be in an area that, you know, because you have to do it outside, obviously, and you may be in an area where it's not uh, conducive to that. But, yeah, you can, you can definitely varnish without an airbrush, and um, certainly you can use the Vallejo liquid metals without a varnish. In fact, I'd, I'd recommend not using a varnish. Have you ever used the Creative line of airbrush? The Createx line of airbrush ready paint, I've, I've never used them. I've seen them at um, uh, Michael's or Hobby Lobby out here in America. And uh, they look okay. I, I don't know, maybe they don't have a huge selection at those stores. They look like they just have kind of basic colors like your primary red, yellow, blue, um, and that kind of thing. It's not a huge selection, um, at least that I've seen. I've never used them, but uh, I did used to use their um, airbrush cleaner. I thought it was pretty good, but I didn't think it was any better than Simple Green, and uh, it was a lot more expensive than using Simple Green. So, Simple Green is the way to go for airbrush cleaning between colors, in my opinion. Oh. Any other questions? If not, I'm going to do some airbrushing on camera today. I don't have any gloves over here, so you're going to see me get paint all over my hands. I'm going to take my ring off because if my wife saw me getting paint all over my wedding ring, she might not be happy. So That's not too loud, is it? Can you guys hear the compressor really loud? Can you hear the compressor really loud through your headphones? That shouldn't be too bad, right? Okay. All right. So we'll we'll leave that on until it uh, fills up, and then we'll hopefully be able to uh, move on with uh, without hearing that. So uh, anyway, are there any other questions before I get started over here? No other questions.
Yeah, if you haven't checked out, it's like over an hour long. I think it might even be an hour and a half. But um, it's Ken, the president of Airbrush, Air Badger Airbrush, is just talking about all the different things, different kinds of airbrushes. He's like the the, the most knowledgeable airbrush person I've ever seen or or heard. Um, it's it's a long video, but if you're interested in getting into airbrushing, I would definitely recommend watching it. They post or uh, Chung posted it on his WD Consortium um, blo- or uh, website. <laughs> my ears, oh my god, no, just kidding. Uh, paint that Mahler, okay. Um, so I'm going to start here, and uh, this thing, I'm going to try to figure out what I'm doing. Uh, I got this uh, this bottle at Hobby Lobby, it just, you know, I mix my, my thinner in here, it's, like I've mentioned in videos, it's 50% distilled water, uh, 10% Liquitex Flowaid, and 40% drying retarder, so I don't have much uh, tip dry. And even though I'm using the Vallejo model airs, I'm still going to thin it about one-to-one. And I was talking while I was putting it in there, so I don't know how many drops I put in there. I don't know. But that looks good. Um, you can stick a you know a, a brush in there or something and, and swirl it around. Um, one other trick I've seen, though, on uh, one of the scale modelers' YouTube channels, um, if you cover up the needle here, and I guess you have to be really careful not to bend the needle, and uh, you're not letting any paint out, and you still bro- blow air through it, you see how it's kind of bubbling there? Um, it's a way to kind of mix it inside of there. And that works. And sometimes I will also drop a drop or two, not much, but a drop or two of alcohol in there to help mix it as well. If you haven't ever added rubbing alcohol to paint, you should you see it just goes crazy. It's really cool. All right, so I'm going to start with this. Um, one of the questions I had about what can I do this week um, was to show how to add more contrast to models. Um, so I'm going to add some, con- I'm going to try to get in the next... 15 or so minutes, uh, paint a, a, a mauler with some some good contrast. Now, this is one of my friend's models from the game store. Uh, he asked me to paint it up for him, so hi, James, if you're watching. Um, this is your mauler. Usually, I would prime this, whoa, I would prime this uh, white, but he already primed it black for me. Well, that's okay. I like to prime, prime white so you can get the more colorized shadows, and uh, it doesn't look quite as dull. Um, but we'll work with what we got here. So I'm going to start with uh, a really dark color. By, I'm actually going to paint these in pretty close to the studio scheme. They're going to eventually be a pretty bright blue. But uh, to get the contrast that we're going for here, there goes the compressor again. To get the contrast we're going for here, I want to start with a kind of a contrasting color. This is VMA Hall Red. And you can notice it's definitely like a brown red, especially over a black, uh, black base coat. Um, it's definitely going to come out brown. Not going to see that red in there. And this is pretty thin, so you'll see what I'm doing is I'm spraying on a little bit and then just pressing down the trigger to blow straight air to the model. So right now there's no paint coming out. I can show you. So I paint, paint. This is this is smart. Paint right on my hand. So paint, paint, no paint. That's kind of what I do. So I'll, I'll blow a couple of squirts of paint on there, then go back over to make sure it's dry, so it's not running all over the place. And uh, I think my PSI on my compressor is probably between 18 and 22, which is where I found is a pretty good range for how I like to to paint. Um, some guys will recommend like you know putting it higher for your base coat, then dropping it down for your uh, your mid tones, then dropping it down even more for your details. And, yeah. Oh, hide the bar on the screen. Good idea. Thank you, huh? Excellent. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, it's about changing the pressure on the on the compressor. I like to just stick it on one um, setting and leave it there, unless I have a really good reason for changing it. Just because then there's there's less work to do, and there's and there's less chance that you uh, you know might accidentally forget that it's on something really high, and you get right up close to the model, and it blows the paint all over the place. Um, so I like to just leave it on around 20, and that's good for me. All right, so that should be. Ah, you can't really see the colors very well there. And what I do when I have extra paint left over, I have one of these paint pots. You can get these on Amazon. This is uh, from Spa. I don't know. It's all gunked over. Spart, Spart, Tax, Spart Max. I don't know. Uh, oh, I got a question. Okay. Oh, for the bloat throw, why did I use secret weapon powder instead of making my own? Um, that one that. Uh, particular pigment is, or that particular uh, powder is really, really densely pigmented, 
and uh, it covers really, really well. I could the uh, the ones I make myself um, are a little bit more subtle, and I kind of wanted a really dark color there, and I was going for that violet anyway, so that worked out. Um, but yeah, the the stuff that you make yourself works great, and I will always make my own and uh, be a fan of that. But the stuff that you buy is always much more densely pigmented because there's no filler in there, and uh, and you can get a much you know much better coverage. It's almost like makeup. Yes. Oh no, I've been using isopropyl uh, to clean my airbrush that bad. No, not at all. Actually, this bottle here is nothing but isopropyl alcohol, and I use that as well. Sometimes I can drop that in there, and um, like right now I'm going to go like to a completely different color. So I want to get a pretty good clean out of there. Um, I don't. I'm not going to like break it all apart and clean it. Um, but this is another way that you can actually clean it is to pour some isopropyl in there or whatever your cleaner is, and then do the back bubbling thing there too. It'll also get some of that, because that will get some of the paint out of the nozzle. And you can kind of spray it onto a paper towel here. Or on your hand. And uh, that will be a good way to clean it. Um, so usually, like, if I was just going from a dark blue to a light blue or something like that, I wouldn't do such a crazy clean, but since I'm training colors completely, um, I want to get it pretty clean in there. So I'm going back to... Yes? <laughs> Um, at what PSI? Uh, 18 to 22 is my favorite PSI for the old airbrush for most tasks. If I'm doing really crazy detail, I'll, I'll drop it down to like 10 or so. Um, this is VMA Blue Angel Blue. Uh, I, oh, I don't know how many drops of thin right from like 10. Um, do about one to one. Six, seven, and uh, a little bit of alcohol. Um, He's going to be blue, but the reason why I did this this red here and the shadows is because I want to um, get a whole lot of contrast. And the way that I like to get a lot of contrast is to have um, really contrasting colors. So he's going to be a light blue color overall, is going to be his base tone color. Um, but uh, he's going to have this really dark reddish brown color underneath uh, in the shadows, in the really the deepest recesses, and that's going to be a great way to get contrast. So what I'm doing here, I'm not like I am going to be covering the majority of that whole red. But since I put it on with an airbrush, it's so thin, it's no big deal. You're not going to lose any detail or anything like that. So what I'm doing here is I'm almost like dry brushing with the... Let's see if I can get the light in here a little better. It's the same idea as dry brushing in that like I'm spraying... There we go. Spraying at the model downward, and it's just like hitting the tops of the, the details. Um, and then, you know, the, the parts underneath it are obviously not getting covered with paint. So um, most of it is going to be blue now, but you can still see like in the muscles there, still going to have, well I guess you can't see <laughs> there, I'm having trouble ah. Ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> my wife is amused, that's the most important thing right, do you have any other questions whilst I'm painting him blue? No questions? Oh, um, oh, no, it's okay. Uh, any quick tips for an airbrush noob? Mainly looking for something that you wish you would have known when you started, something that may easily be over. Quick tips for an airbrush noob, something I wish I had known when I started first. Um, be real, real careful with the needle. Um, it's easy, easy, easy to bend, and um, that sucks. So be real careful with the needle. Um, also be real careful about what parts of your airbrush are made of rubber um, and you don't want to get anything caustic near that that could dissolve it so like the O-rings well, the o here and there's no ring here and in here um, that was going to keep away from acetone and that kind of thing um, so you want to make sure you know your airbrush inside and out and uh, don't be afraid you know, there's nothing really you can do to, to screw it up too bad <laughs> these things are pretty solid if you watch one of Chung's videos he takes one of his Badger airbrushes and like, slams it against the table over and over to prove that you can't really break these things. Um, you can't break the needle, obviously. <laughs> um, but uh, the airbrush itself, um, you're not going to break it. So just have fun with it and play with it and practice a whole lot. That's my biggest recommendation. Lots of practice. Um, you said you were teaching yourself what you teach. What do I teach? I teach audio video production in high school in Fort Worth, Texas. What kind of drying retarder do you use? What kind of drying retarder? I use Liquitex um, drying retarder, Liquitex slow dry. 
um, which I think you can just pick up at uh, Hobby Lobby or Michael's or anything like that. What about Xenophon Carmen? Why or Grand Black Carmen? Um, I've never done the Xenophil priming thing because I think with an airbrush it's, you can get the really smooth um, and really bright highlights without doing that. Um, I think it would be great for a uh, regular bristle brush, um, but I've never tried it even with the airbrush. I'd like to at some point. I'd like to experiment with that. And that's where you base coat the model or prime the model black. I'm adding thinner here. And uh, then you, you know, prime over it with, uh, with white. So it, you know, it's already got the highlights in there for you, and you should be able to get highlights easier that way. Um, I can see that being really important with uh, regular brushing, that you don't want to get like, you know, have to paint white highlights over black. But uh, with the airbrush, you can you can paint white over black black without too much trouble. I love you, honey. Um, the alcohol is in there just to help mix the thinner and the paint. And if I ever like mix two colors, um, the alcohol is going to help it mix and can help the paint run a little bit. Uh, wow, that's a blue thumb. <laughs> um, the thinner, why do I put the thinner in there? Um, I could probably paint this without, because these are Vallejo Model Air. Um, I could do this without any thinner, I'm sure. Um, but uh, I do it just to keep really thin coats and to have some translucency so that um, I could put like a little bit of this paint on there and uh, like you can see on his shoulders I just put a little bit and it's still translucent. You can still see the layers underneath it. It's like I can add more and I can cover a little bit more or add more and more. So you can still get um, like those transitions um, with one color and also it keeps it from, from clogging as much. Though I don't get a whole lot of clogging with VMA paints. They're pretty clog proof as long as you've, you're keeping junk out of there. I'm sorry, what was the question? Uh, um, so short bursts versus continuous streams when airbrushing. I think this is looking okay. Um, I always prefer to do the, the short bursts, even when I'm doing um, like base coats, uh, just to make sure that I'm not flooding the model with paint in any areas. Um, so it's always going to be a, a real short burst like this. this is a, but you will see some people who do, you know, long and they can paint all over, but... Um, the way I do it, I've always had better luck just doing very, very short bursts, which is why you want to find an airbrush and test one out that has um, a trigger that you're really happy with, that you can, you feel like, like this one I think is like an extremely responsive trigger. Um, it, it's like it knows what I want. So, um, yeah, if you're going to test out some airbrushes and you're going to get a dual action airbrush, dual action meaning um, you can control the flow of paint and the flow of air separately, and that's the kind of airbrush you definitely want. Otherwise, you're just using like an aerosol can, essentially. Um, then uh, you want to try them out and find one where you really like the dual action and has a really smooth trigger. Um, the first airbrush I used, a Pache, uh, was a nice airbrush for like a starter airbrush. But um, overall, nah, I wasn't happy with how the um, the dual action worked. But it was it was really it was really affordable and uh, it it was good to get into airbrushing with it, I guess. Is airflow or paint flow more important to control for light soft spray? That's an interesting question. I never thought of that. Um, I would, you know, I hate to do the the cop out answer and just say they're equally important. Um, but uh, I think that airflow is well, uh, probably maybe more important when you're de doing detail work because um, if you're putting too much air through it, it's going to start blowing the paint all over because they're going to be so close to the model anyway. Um, also, on some airbrushes, uh, like this one, for example. Um, has a needle stopper. I think most of them probably have a needle stopper. So like with a needle stopper off, I can pull the needle all the way, the trigger all the way back, and it can, you know, let out all of its paint that way. I can press in the needle stopper and adjust it however I want, and that way I cannot pull the, the trigger back any more than this, or, you know, whatever I set it to. Um, so if you feel like, you know, you're going to have a lot of trouble 
um, doing both things like controlling the flow of paint and flow of air at the same time, um, don't be afraid to use your needle stopper. Like I've seen a lot of tutorials where people are like, that's like tricycles for babies. And I'm like, you're a baby. Doesn't matter, just use a needle stopper. Nobody's gonna like come to your house and laugh at you for using a needle stopper. I might. Always terrified you're going to bend your needle when you're cleaning your airbrush. Me too. <laughs> um, and uh, I've bent more than my share. And um, now that I'm using this Infinity with, uh, it's a 0.15 millimeter needle, so the tip is like, if you look at it wrong, it's going to bend. Um, so, yeah, that's why one thing that I really like about you know, Badger and Iwata is that I can get replacement parts locally. So if one day I just bend my needle on accident, I can just go up to Hobby Lobby or Michaels and get a replacement. Um, with this Infinity, the only places in America, as far as I know, that sell harder and steam back, harder and steam back parts are TCP Global and Chicago Airbrush Supply. So I have to go. I'm gonna put a little white in here. So I have to go online and order an, uh, like spare needles if I break them, and it takes a few days to get here. So it's kind of a pain in that way. So um, if you're looking for something and you're not sure what uh, airbrush to get, I would say see what you can get replacement parts for locally because that's a huge, huge benefit. Um, are the PP is that the privateer press paints the P3 paints? Um, are there any uh, specific things to look out for um, using P3 paints through the airbrush? No, actually those use a liquid pigment and they flow great through the airbrush. Um, I'd say almost as well as the VMA paints as long as you're careful to thin them um, as much as they want to be thinned. Thinned. Um, one thing that you do have to be careful, or not really careful, but just aware of, is that um, the P3 paints don't come in dropper bottles, and that's a huge pain. So if you're already using them like that, um, and you're used to it, then you're a step ahead. But if you're used to using dropper bottles, or you haven't started airbrushing yet, you're going to see real f quickly how annoying it is to uh, have to use, like, I, I go through these pretty quickly. These are little eyedroppers that I have to dip into the P3 paint and then transfer it over the airbrush. And that's annoying. I wish P3 would put them on uh, and dropper bottles like Reaper and uh, Vallejo, but I've seen on their privateer press forums that their studio painters don't like them at all, um, so they're never going to do that as far as I know. But that's okay. Oh, not careful there. Oh, and we see if we see this here, here, well, we're not probably going to be able to focus on this thing. Um, we're getting a little splattering here, like these little little dots here. That's probably telling me either my paint's not thin enough, and I know it is because I thinned it a lot, or in this case, the needle, there's a little bit of tip dry here, and that is the case. There is a little bit of paint dried on the tip of the needle. Um, I recommend for the most part not to do what I just did and take off the um, the needle guard, um, but sometimes, and, and paint like that. Because um, like if I touch this model with a needle, I'm in trouble. Um, but I'm going to do it anyway, because I feel like I can see better where the needle is pointed. Um, but that's probably that's probably why I'm always bending needles, actually. That's probably why. All right, so I thought we were talking about contrast, I think. I'm not sure if I've explained contrast or what I'm doing here at all. Probably not. Um, contrast really what the way I, I approach that is just I always start with my darkest color and work up to my lightest color. I know a lot of people like to start with their base color or their midtone and then shade up, shade down, and highlight up, and then you know go from there. Uh, I feel like I never get bright enough or dark enough if I do that. So I always start with my darkest color, and uh, a lot of times you're going to see painters do it and just start with their base coat, base color, um, and they do a great job with it. But I, I have trouble with that. Um, I know like if you watch the Minotaur, miniature mentor tutorials, all those guys over there start with their their mid-tone color, and then we'll do like a shade, and then a highlight, then a second shade, then a second highlight. I that's I, That blows my mind. I can't do that at all. So any other questions as we uh, move along here with this troll? Oh, okay. My wife is the best wife in the whole world, by the way. But her computer keeps freezing. Is 
Christian comment. My first airbrush was a cheap Chinese made dual action, and I bought my first IWATA dual action. The trigger was not in dick. Mm. This is a, there's a comment that like I went from like a cheap like you can get those on eBay real cheap those Chinese airbrushes, um, and then he went to an Iwata. He said the trigger action was night and day, and it really is like when I I think I've mentioned this before on videos that I used the Pache first, which is a dual action, and then I went to the Harder and Steenbeck, and it was ah, I've gotten that dirty. You usually don't do that, <laughs> and uh, it was so different. The dual action was so different that I almost had to like relearn how to airbrush because it was I learned horrible techniques trying to work with the Pache. Um, and uh, I had to learn how to use the airbrush properly with the, with the harder and steam bag. Sorry, shaky can't. We're in, uh, we're in the Blair Witch project. Um, oh, go ahead. You, yeah, you can get um, dropper bottles to transfer your P3 paints too, and that would be a good way to do it. I, that just seems like more work than I want to do, and uh, I don't feel like I should have to do that. I feel like P3 should do that for me. <laughs> How do you stop from over-highlighting where it looks weird? Um, I always, and this is something I may oh, highlight to the point where, oh, wow. Oops. I may highlight too much on some of my models, um, but uh, how do you keep from overhighlighting to the point where it looks weird? I always purposely um, highlight more than I want to. Like right now, I'm highlighting up to what usually I would use pure white. This is Minotaur's Snow White, which is like not quite 100% white, but I'm out of my VMA white and uh, need to, to make another order on that. So um, I'm going to highlight up to pretty close to pure white uh, with my highlights, and uh, then I'm going to go back over it with a glaze of like a really thin down base coat, um, which I think in this case was uh, light sea blue, I guess. Do you mean light sea blue or whatever that other one was? Uh, Dark angels blue or something like that. So if you find like you've highlighted too much, um, you can always go back over it with a really thin glaze, um, either by regular brush or with the paint airbrush, and that will tie all of your transitions together nicely, and it will tone down your highlights if you've gone too far. And this camera is terrible. Like I'm sure that it looks like really contrasty. Um, and I'm, it's just bad lighting and bad camera. And I haven't done a very good job of painting it either because I'm trying to talk and paint and be in frame. Excuses, excuses. Yeah. As far as learning how to airbrush, any advice other than just going for it? Um, I say start with bigger models um, because the little ones are probably going to drive you nuts. I know when I first started, I was kind of intimidated by the idea of using like my big you know, war jacks and war beasts and stuff because like, oh, those are so expensive. I mess them up. You know, it's, I wasted a bunch of money. But I mean, you can just invest in a bottle of Simple Green. And if you watch Plug Butt Miniatures, this stuff can actually change your colors green. I did not know that. Um, but if you use this, it will strip the paint off. So if you don't uh, like your, you know, what you did, um, that's like the best tool to have when you're first starting out with your airbrush. Uh, but just go for it and practice and start on bigger models so you have more wide open spaces. And like this is a great one to start with because um, it's, it's like a finely detailed model. It's a really nice sculpt, but there's not a whole lot of like doodads and trinkets. It's mainly just like wide open muscles and stuff like that. Um, so this would be a good one. If you're into War Machine, I'd say if you can get the old uh, Mauler, which is like not even available anymore because they have this terrible new sculpt for the Mauler. It looks like I don't even I don't even know what, but it's the worst thing ever. Anyway. But this time, my wife really is the best wife in the world. She got me a shirt that says "Pugs, not drugs" for Christmas. Because we have a pug. Any other questions while I'm cleaning the airbrush and shaking the camera here? Any, oh, any other questions or anything? Or Yeah, 
Yeah, oh, yeah, you can get them all if you go through the PP website, but then you have to pay retail plus their shipping, which they kind of go crazy on shipping, I think, sometimes. Um, so, yeah, you, I guess it's still available. I shouldn't say it's not available. Um, all right, what's the next thing I'm going to do here? I'm going to put in some more. I, I kind of want a little, a little cray-cray. Do we say cray-cray still? Uh, with my highlights and my base tone. So I'm going to go in with, uh, I would usually use a probably Leviathan purple, um, but it's all the way to the other side of the room, and I've got right here Ghost Tint Purple from Minotaur, which is actually a pretty good match for Leviathan Purple. A dupe. <laughs> a dupe. My wife's into her makeup dupes. Now I, I, she, she's going to start up a makeup channel on YouTube, and she's really into finding what they call dupes, which are like this, you know, the, the off-brands, which look and work exactly the same as the, as the real stuff. And now I said that her screen name on YouTube should be The Duper Scooper. She didn't think that was funny. So you guys could, can convince her. Anyway, wow, this is like, on my screen it looks totally teal, but in real life it's really blue. Um, but I'm going to go in here with this, and I'm going to have trouble doing this and talking at the same time. But uh, I'll, I'll try. And this is something um, I, I really like from Minotaur, the, the new line, the, the ghost tints, these ink things. I know everybody on the internet is calling them candies. Um, so I guess that's what they are, the candy paints. Uh, but in here we can see the thing that I was just going to say is that these things clog more than anything else in the Minotaur line. And it's really strange because they're the thinnest out of everything in the Minotaur line. But they clog really fast. So that's one thing I'm not a huge fan of. But uh, I guess to get contrast, I'm going to go in here and do a contrasting color and put some, some purple in here. And I think also on the box art, the Mahler has purple on him. So hopefully James will love this because he likes his models to look like the box art. Wow, I'm going to have to do this over. This looks terrible. That purple's not showing up very well. So I'm going to go in with the brown. With, uh, brown, which is pretty close to Devlin Mud. Pretty close to Devlin Mud. Uh, how long does it take to paint a video tutorial model? Um, I guess it depends on which one. I think I, the the Troll Blood um, Mountain King was like probably 30 hours or more. But um, I try to get like the uh, the Terminators done. I used to try to get them done in an hour and a half, but that's just not possible. I don't think to do all the stuff I want to do. So maybe like three hours for like a Terminator. Um, something like this I'd probably do in three hours or th four hours, something like that. Um, the real time drain on those videos is like doing the editing, writing the narration doing the, uh, the motion graphics, color correction, all the, the post-production stuff, which actually I really enjoy doing all that. But uh, that's, where the, that's where the time goes. Uh, and, it's, and obviously it takes a lot more time to do this. Like right now, usually I would be right up close to the model, but I'm trying to talk and get it on camera, and uh, it's going to take a little bit more time that way. Hope you guys are having fun. I'm having fun here. Everybody having fun? If you use simple green to strip paint, is there anything special you need to do before painting again? Um, I don't think so. Uh, usually when I strip it with simple green, um, I'll also uh, just scrub it with a toothbrush and some soap. Uh, just like you would any other model that came out of the out of a box, um, but I don't I don't think it's necessary because it's kind of like a degreaser, um, and I think it should it should clean while it's stripping the paint. So um, it's probably ready to go, but I, I'd also say it's probably not a bad idea to to clean it first. I've also seen there's a question on um, the Privateer press forums once where somebody asked, um, you know, I'm using green stuff and I uh, I'm using um, Vaseline or petroleum jelly to help you know, not leave fingerprints. Do I need to clean it before I put on paint? And I opened a thread and I was like, everybody's going to say, of course you do. And then all the models were like, no, nah, I never do. Um, which I found really weird. But uh, I guess that goes to say paint can go over anything and, and be okay. But I would suggest, I mean, not being an expert at all at green stuff, I would still suggest cleaning off petroleum jelly before putting on paint. All right, I don't know how that looks. Gosh, it's out of focus. It's out of focus. 
Like a makeup channel fight club? Like a makeup channel what? Fight club? <laughs> what is that? I don't know. Does it have to do with the duper scooper? I don't know, maybe. The duper scooper. And this person says, I have a small issue with getting a spidering of the paint at times. <laughs> is that from something I'm doing wrong? All right, so the question was, we have a little bit of issue with spidering the paint sometimes. Um, that could be a combination of two things. Either you're or I guess several things. Um, one is that either your paint, and the spidering with, um, and I can actually do this here on, uh, do I have anything? I don't mind ruining. Well, I started this Thag Rush. I want to do like a colorful scheme on it, and I just hate it. So I'm just, I'll do this as an example. The spidering is if um, you get too close to the model, and you kind of like spray, that's like way over exaggerated, and uh, you get like these, like a spider web kind of look to it, and it could be a mix of like one of three different things, either one uh, or four different things. One, you're holding the, 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 the paint down too long, so you're getting too much paint. And you can see here, possibly, like this. It's just like spraying all over the place. Um, so that could be one problem. Uh, two is that it could be too thin. The paint can actually have too much thinner in it. I know we usually think airbrush needs to be extremely thin, and it does need to be thin. But you don't want it to be so thin that the paint doesn't actually adhere to the model and spiders all over the place. Um, your PSI could be too high. So it could be that the um, the pressure from the airbrush is causing the paint to, when it hits the model, it's like the pressure from the air, the force of the air is actually moving the paint around. Um, or you could be too close to the model. So those, I guess, are the four things to, to think about. Um, one, are you using short bursts of paint as opposed to long bursts of paint? Um, are you too close to the model as opposed to you know being farther away? Um, is the paint too thin? And what's your PSI at? If you're doing really fine detail work, like if I was to you know, do his cloak here, I might want to get down to 10 or so, because that's going to be tough. You can see I'm spidering there to, um, to do detail work on that. Um, because Just because the, the airbrush has got to be so close, it's going to start blowing the paint all over the place. The ghost tints with a normal brush are the inks, washes, or heavy glazes. They're definitely not like washes because um, they don't have uh, whatever it is in there that helps the washes to go into the recesses. So you wouldn't want to use these as washes. I'd say they're kind of like thin inks. Um, they're not. Wow, my hands are filthy. Look at this. Um, they. Uh, I don't know if you're referring to like the heavy glazes. If those are like the the new G A W paints, I've actually never used those, um, but. I would think that they probably be somewhere like either that or um, or like a, a thin ink. They're not. They don't go on great with a brush. I, I have to say they they really don't go on with a brush at all. And that's not a, like a, a knock against them. They're just not meant to go on with a, with a regular paintbrush. They leave a little. They're kind of streaky and real translucent. Um, so I would say, you know, maybe you know, like to get into the shadows and details and stuff like that, possibly. But for the most part, um, those are going to want to use with the airbrush. Your head and cut your belly at the same time. Is this a requirement for real-time video streaming? Rub your head. Oh, trying to figure out how to do this thing. Uh, probably not. No, I cannot do that. Um, and also on the note, somebody asked why did I use the secret weapon pigment? Um, you can see here if I put like my just dab my brush in there a little bit and I like wipe it. You can see how densely pigmented that is. So I'm using just a little bit here and it's really covering well. Like I almost can't even see the white underneath the paper towel there. So that's really good if I want to do that. Like for example, here I'm going to do that mainly for um, convenience sake, so I don't have to grind out a pastel because they're not even anywhere near me. And with these, you just kind of, I, I want to be a little more precise than this, um, but it's not a big deal if you're not because you can easily clean these up with um, water on a Q-tip, just like you clean up the oil washes, uh, except, of course, you would use water instead of an oil thinner. And despite what Pugbutt says, uh, olive oil is not a good thinner for olive, for oil paints. Though I have to admit, <laughs> it worked so much better than I expected uh, the olive oil to, th to thin your, your oil paints. I expected it to be a huge disaster, and it turned out, like, worked out better than I planned. A lot better than I planned. Simple green leaving primer in the model? Um, usually no. Usually I don't have any problem with simple green, simple green leaving the primer in the model. Um, but simple green, as opposed, like when I strip metal models, and I used to do that in acetone for the most part, I don't do that at all anymore. I use simple green for everything. Um, the acetone would just dissolve the paint and the primer and the glue and everything right off. Um, with the simple green, I still have to get in there with a, um, 
a toothbrush and scrub it off, but usually it takes the primer off uh, very nicely. Though there was one one thing I found the Privateer Press um, primer. Uh, some of my friends at the game store asked me to paint some of their Legion of Airblight models a long time ago, and uh, I brought them home, and the primer's on there really thick, and I left it in acetone overnight, and it like didn't even put a dent in the primer, and I, was, I had to call and say, "What primer is this? This is amazing." It's driving me nuts, but it's amazing. So if you have, if you don't use the, I mean, if you're in the market for a new primer, the P3 stuff is really nice, but it's only in the aerosol cans. Van Hammer, he's he's a he's a sculpting guru. Van Hammer, what's up, Van Hammer? He enjoys space wolves. I've been told. Don't knock plug butt. Oh my goodness. I didn't realize it was so late, guys. I, I we started way late. Um, I'm making a mess of this here. I put way too much <laughs> pigment on there. But you can kind of see overall how this worked in the uh, I don't know what did that took 20 minutes or so, and it would it would go a lot faster if I wasn't trying to do things like figure out which way the camera was facing. Um, so this is like I guess the whole thing was about how do you get more contrast? And it's just adding more color, contrasting colors, and starting with your your darkest shade and working up to the light. Oh, it's Chung. What's up, Chung? And Wicked Paintbrush, one. Hello, Andrew. Yo, just got to check in the mail. The logo designer Steve did. Logo designer Steve. Logo designer Steve made an awesome logo for Schnauzer Face Minis. Um, and I love it. I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I was going to hold a contest, but I think he already, he already claimed that one. He, he drew a Schnauzer with a, a purple hoodie. Well, I asked him if he could do it with a purple hoodie, and it was, I, I'll put the color in, but it's a Schnauzer with a hoodie. It's amazing. And there's airbrushes in the background. The Krugster, always there. I recognize these names. It's so cool to see these names. I appreciate it, guys. I do. I do. Yeah, this model looks pretty crummy. I think I, <laughs> I ruined it with the pigment in the end there. Um, but uh, that's the basic idea there. Anyway, so it is 10:20. This has gone on for a long time, and I still have 30 people here, so I really appreciate you guys sticking around and everything, and uh, especially since we took a couple weeks off here. Uh, but I hope you guys all had an awesome holiday, and uh, I will be back again next Monday with another Schnauzer Hour. Um, so if you have any questions, please definitely uh, you know send me a YouTube PM or something like that. All the things I talked about today, oh, I didn't even get to OSL. I'll do that next week. Uh, but the contrast was a request. Somebody said, you know, could you show us how you do contrast in your models? So anything that you want to see, uh, please let me know. I will be happy to, to get to it or talk about it. So anyway, thank you guys so much, and thank you to my lovely wife. I love her so much. And I hope everybody has a fantastic night, and I'll see you guys all next week. Bye.